All right, are you excited to get started on the floral hair collage? I know I am. This is one of my favorite parts. I have my hair traced onto my pelon sitting in front of me. I have my floral collage elements detail cut. You'll notice I have them separated into piles. This pile is my lightest lights. This uh, over here is my medium lights. Um, this is my darker mediums, and this is my darkest elements. This pile here is just large pieces that I think I might want to use in the background as my foundation pieces. I have a range of values here from light to dark. I thought I would talk you through this process, give you a glimpse inside my mind and what I'm thinking, thinking as I create my floral collage. To start with, if I want my collage to be dimensional, I want my hair to seem to have form to it, then I want to think of, as I build it, a light source shining onto it. I'm going to imagine the sun is shining from above the hair and to my left. So the brightest lights are going to be hitting around right here, maybe some on this part where the puffy tail comes out a little bit, maybe on this part of the cheek. My mid-tones will cover most of the area of the hair, and then I'll start to get darker as I do the areas that would be turned away from the light. So I'll have some dark areas under the arm right here, and under the leg, and on this side of the tail. For the leg, I do a little bit more dark under here. I'm thinking there might be some light hitting here and the back would get darker. This leg comes in front of the other leg, something like this. So I will make the back leg darker and the front leg lighter to separate them out from each other. So you can tell they're two distinct legs. I'll do the same thing with the ears up here. I imagine if the light were hitting here, this ear right here would be lighter right there. You'd get some light on that ear right there. You'd get some shadow going on here and you'd have the shadow contrasting with the light area on this ear and that would help separate the two ears. That's one of the things I'm keeping in mind as I work, my light source. I also keep in mind what I want to emphasize in the hair and how I want to guide the viewer's eye, how I want it to travel and where I want it to rest. My hair's eye is going to be a focal point, but I'm not putting the eye in until the very end because it needs to be on top of the other layers. When I do put it in, I'm going to make sure it pops. When it comes to helping the viewer's eye travel, I look for paths and lines that I want to emphasize. There are some beautiful lines in this hair. I love how this leg's leg comes up in an elegant C curve like this. If you imagine the muscle, it would create a round form right there. From there, the lines undulate up and down and end with a swooping curve that reminds me of a ski jump. All these curves create a natural rhythm. It's one we see often in nature in things like vines or rolling hills. It's very pleasing to the eye, so I want to make sure I preserve these waves when I'm arranging my collage. The lines also give a sense of motion. The middle section is basically horizontal, but then I can see through the way the front legs are stretched out straight with just a bit of an upward upward curve that the hair is stretching and leaping forward. I want to capture that straightness and stretching of the front legs. And then the way the back legs have that diagonal angle that's a lot like a ski slope and it gives me the sense of pushing and propelling the hair forward. That's a powerful line. So in accentuating these lines, I create a sense of motion. I was interrupted at the end of recording that last section and I got started arranging my collage while I wasn't recording. So as you can see, I've already done some of the arranging. But before I start talking about that, there's one last thing I want to mention about design and that's color. So this is a monotone palette. I'm using whites, grays, and a few blacks. So all the rules of value and line apply to where I use my lighter and darker values and so on. If I were using blue, I would follow the, those rules as well. I would use, I'd have a range of values from dark to light. I use the, the lighter blues to um, add the highlighted 
bright areas that the light is hitting and I'd use the darker blues to put in the shadows. And then I would also, as I mentioned before, try to add emphasis to the lines and the areas that I want to emphasize. All the same rules apply if you're using a single color. If you're using multiple colors, the rule, those same rules do still apply. Um, the only thing I would also keep in mind is to kind of try to balance my colors. So if I have three or four different different colors, maybe even more. I try to kind of make sure they balance throughout the hair rather than having a clump of orange here, a clump of blue here, and so on. That's the only, really the only different thing that I would be thinking about with multiple colors.